Jill's Cookie Fondo 2023 is over. We're now starting our off-season uh, weightlifting plan. We drove over to Thousand Oaks early Saturday morning. We had registration open. Some of the great folks from Sierra Club sent volunteers. Started with a course of pro coffee. All the vendors were there hanging out. 12 Speed, JoJ Bars, Bonk Breaker, Horse Factor showed up. They donated an Ostro Vam for the charity auction. Doma had a booth. They're this little silicone gizmo you can stick in your pocket. Stick cookies in there. Bike Legal, as always. They were also at the dog sitting booth. Nala loves it. Smart. <laughs> Nala, what's in there? That is a good one. Oh, okay, so. Pizza! <laughs> then we had the Shammy Butter Shakeout Ride uh, slash costume contest. Most folks just went out for a ride. We had optional routes that morning you could just go do on your own, unsupported. If you wanted to, if you're coming from out of town and you want to do more than one day of riding in Malibu, uh, we had that set up for you. But there were plenty of great costumes. Pro tip if you do a Halloween ride, put your black bib shorts underneath the costume. Uh, your crotch will thank you. Stefano went with the cape option, which is much more aero and convenient than the full cookie suit, especially when it's 80 degrees out. I was boiling. And I did go to the back at one point to check on everybody, and then I had to catch back up to the front. It's all fun and games until you're doing 7 watts per kilo in a cookie suit. Then it was still fun and games. It was just sweaty. I made everyone stop for a group photo. Of course, the winner of the costume contest was a very overqualified Gordon Tarpley. Now, some might say that it's sandbagging to enter a costume contest if you're literally a professional actor and Hollywood costume designer, but that sounds a lot like the folks who said that professional cyclists aren't allowed on Strava for some reason. But if you'd want to win, you just better try harder, damn it. Sorry, that got cathartic. Uh, Gordon, enjoy your new year supply of Gooder sunglasses and chamois butter. Next, we had VeloFix Los Angeles Mobile Bike Shop. Give kind of a new rider tutorial. This is Harley. He's been my personal mechanic for a few years now from VeloFix Los Angeles. I love him. Creature loves him more. The rest of the afternoon, we just hung out, made friends, talked to old friends. Here's Peter Flax and Frankie Andreu hanging out. This year, if you saw my Instagram, we had an anonymous donor give 100 entries to juniors. So we had a ton of young riders there this year. Not that young. Then we went home and put on our formal decathlon wear for the VIP dinner. Of course, we rode the state e-bikes there because it was just around the corner at the lovely Peddler's Fork restaurant in Calabasas. That's a must check out for any bike dorks or pros who come through town. Not now, Peter. The VIP dinner is for folks who pay for the extra VIP entry. You get a fancier goodie bag. We also invite the pros and the sponsors. Uh, of course, the biggest sponsor is Matt Construction. Now, this isn't just any construction company. These folks do some of the coolest projects in Los Angeles. They're hanging the Endeavor space shuttle. So here's me in a cutoff cookie outfit uh, trying to sound smart in front of Steve Matt. The wine was all local, donated from Dusty Nabor Wines. Uh, this guy's a real artisan. Small business, does it all himself. Rides bikes too, of course. And yes, there were cookies at the VIP dinner. The cookies this year were from Farm Shop which distributes to like all of the fancy coffee shops all around LA. So they had the capacity to do 6,000 cookies in a day. They take good care of us and our riders. So day one was done, went super smooth. Historically at this point, I'm ready to start having fun. Sunday's the main event. I have great folks out marking the courses, volunteers at the aid stations, catering staff, cooking the meals for a thousand people. And I just get to do a great bike ride with my friends. But instead, I woke up to 15 missed calls and text messages like this. It was funny because it wasn't windy in my house or at the expo at that time, but the Santa Ana winds were clearly hitting the canyons and the coast. Now, anyone who's ever planned an event from a bike ride to a wedding, you know that you're obsessively staring at the weather beforehand. In SoCal, I'm afraid of fires, heat, or even a drop of rain. I've experienced some tough winds, but I've still gone on my training rides. But of course, winds like this do present a safety hazard to smaller riders, riders with less experience than me, and in general, it just makes for a much more challenging day. So we made the decision to eliminate the super long route, the double fudge, we call it. We told the riders what to expect out there and encourage them to maybe downgrade to one of the shorter distances than they'd signed up for. This proved to be the correct decision. At the top of the first climb, the Low Pasadena hosted the first aid station, and that was where we could feel the wind from the coast. Yeah, we were at the start. We were at the high hotel. I'm like, what do you need to me? It was wild out there at times. Depending on when you hit certain canyons, certain bits, I almost got blown off the road going down Latigo at one point. I've got to say I'm really proud of the riders for staying within their ability levels. With over a thousand riders, there's always going to be a crash or two, but there wasn't anything bad this year. I think the wind kind of 
force people to slow down and be a little bit more careful rather than maybe having too much fun and really ripping the descents. It also made sure we all kept both hands on the bars at all times. Our next stop was the Malibu Fig Farm, where Carl the Flamingo himself from Gooder was handing out new sunglasses for folks who lost theirs in the canyons in the wind. And the Big Orange Cycling Club was handing out cookies. Next time was Ansonal Canyon. Now I pick Ensenal for these routes because Ensenal is the most tame, it is the easiest of the climbs in Malibu, but not today, my friends. Folks were walking, bikes were sideways. Here's a segment comparison from Chapeau. This was the slowest I've ever gone up Ensenal Canyon. Those who made it to the top were greeted by none other than Justin Williams at the Legion of Los Angeles hosted aid station. The original plan was that he was gonna barbecue, but I'm glad he decided not to do that and set the whole city on fire. If he was out there all day handing out merch and selfies, honestly, Justin taught me a lot about the value of community. It was really cool to see him volunteer to come out. From there, we coasted down Mulholland Highway all the way to the, the coast where the Lagrange Cycling Club was slinging cookies. Lagrange is one of the biggest clubs in the US and of course the host of my favorite Sunday morning group ride. And by the way, if you didn't cramp on Ensenal Canyon, if you didn't cramp just watching this video, that was not luck or coincidence, that was science. From there, it's what I consider the climax of Phil's Cookie Fondo. The Yerba Buena climb, followed by a super narrow, twisty, beautiful, scenic, remote portion of Ventura County that takes you to the top of Deer Creek. Stefano Barberi and I probably had a little more fun than I would recommend going down Deer Creek in these conditions. <laughs> And of course, we stopped the next aid station to let folks rejoin. This one was hosted by PAA, the Pasadena Athletic Association, really nice club out of Pasadena. And the final climb of the day is Petrero Grade, which is the worst on paper, but was really a since compared to Ensenal. Still some folks walking though, I don't blame them. Final aid station at the top there, also hosted by Lagrange Club. Some folks took a breather. I had my seventh cookie of the day, and then it was just half an hour of teamwork to get us back to the finish, where Sunday's insurance handled the bike valet. Get it? They're taking care of your bike. That's what they do. Dinner was Mexican food. Fat Tire kicked in a bunch of beer. Emily and I stayed until all the riders were done. And then I hung out a few more hours, helping to pack trucks, clean everything up. So I assure you, however tired you were, I got the exhaustion KOM today. Thank you very much. I think you can tell that a lot goes into this stuff. But as always, it's totally worth it to see folks cross the line with a smile on their face, hear Frankie call their names. So just one last thank you. All the staff, volunteers, sponsors, but mostly the riders. Whatever route you end up doing, whether you finish the full route or not, I appreciate everyone for staying within themselves, being safe, having a great attitude, and helping contribute to a great cause. My off season begins now.